The Stitcher. Most raiders love it because of its high fire rate causing close range enemies to be quickly full of lead. But does that make up for the poor accuracy and the low damage? Let's find out. Now let's look at the weapon stats. The Stitcher level 1, we don't know the recoil or the base reload speed. The durability is 100. As you level it up, the horizontal recoil goes to minus 16.6, minus 33.3 and minus 50. The reload speed is 13% quicker, 26% quicker and 40% quicker at all the different levels and the durability goes up by 10 at each level. The other weapon stats that are interesting, the ammo is light, arc penetration is weak, damage is 7 and the agility is 74. To craft a level 1 stitcher it takes 8 metal parts and 4 rubber parts. To upgrade this to a level 2 it takes 8 metal parts and 12 rubber parts. To upgrade to level 3 is 10 metal parts and 1 simple gun part and finally to level 4 is 3 mechanical parts and 1 simple gun part. In terms of the cost at each level you can see the left hand column has the cost per level, the middle column has the total cost and the right hand column has the sell cost. You can see between level 3 and 4 it doubles the cost but until level 3 it's relatively cheap. A lot of people have wondered about weapon accuracy and currently I don't really have a reliable way that will test it mathematically yet. But I thought I could at least show the side by side comparison of the increased weapon accuracy at the different ranges and at different levels. This way you can make up your own mind if the extra upgrades are worth it. Now we need to see how the damage works. My shield video breaks down how damage mitigation works but here's a quick recap if you haven't seen it. You've got 100 health and 40 shields but this is assuming you're using a light shield. The damage reduction is 40% so you times your damage by 0.6 to get the damage that would make it through to your health bar. In this case you take the 7 damage times by 0.6 and you get 4.2. The bullet deals 7 damage so that 7 damage goes directly to your shield charge and the reduced damage goes directly to your health bar of 4.2. This is what it looks like when you've got the other shields with the different damage reductions. So the medium still takes 7 and the heavy still takes 7 to the shield charge, but they reduce it to 4 and 3.3 respectively. This is how many shots it takes to kill a light user. The purple unshielded damage is just the damage that's taken after the shield is broken. It takes 17 total shots to kill the light user. To kill the medium user it takes 19 shots. And to kill the heavy user it's 21 shots. Now let's look at headshots. Currently there's a lot of disagreement about headshot multipliers and how they work, but a lab assistant and I have done some testing and we've came to the same conclusion about the stitcher. So to calculate the headshot, for the stitcher you take your normal damage of 7 and times that by 2.5 and that gets us 17.5 damage. When we apply this to the health bar, you're going to take 7 damage which is just the normal shot to the light shield. The remaining 17.5 goes to the health bar, but because we're using a shield it's going to be reduced by the 40% to 11. This is what it looks like with the other shields and it takes 9 shots to kill the light user, 10 shots to kill the medium, but 13 to kill the heavy. Keep in mind this is getting every single shot as a headshot, but this is actually showing that the heavy user has quite a lot more tankiness than the other users which is unusual compared to the other weapons in this series. So now we have the shots to kill, we need to get the fire rate. First of all we need to measure the time between shots which I can do using the number of frames in the clips. But what's important is that we measure using the muzzle flash and not the HUD, as the HUD has a slight lag which can be inconsistent. Now let's look at the fire rate calculation. To calculate this we take the shots minus 1 times by the FPS that I record at divided by the number of frames in the clip. We do the shots minus 1 because the first shot is instantaneous and we'll not have anything that we can compare it to. So this is 19 shots because 20 minus 1 times 60 FPS that I record at divided by 100 frames of the clip. This gives us 11.4 shots per second or 684 shots per minute. As mentioned, every extra gun level increases the reload speed, but there's a bit of an issue here. I tested this a few times, but like the hairpin, the numbers and the in-game stats they just don't add up. I'm going to show you the raw numbers that I got, the percentage increases that I got and compare them to what the game says it should be. So we've got the reload time in seconds and this is 3, 2.5, 2 and 1.5 at the 4 different levels. The reload time in percentage, we've got the baseline of 3 so 0%, minus 17, minus 33 and minus 50% for the 3 different levels. This looks nice, it's a really nice linear decrease of 0.5 per level, but the game says it should be 3, 2.6, 2.2 and 1.8, assuming that 3 is the baseline, so 0%, minus 13, minus 26 and minus 40, as the stats say in game. Now this is very similar to what the hairpin said 
but we don't really know why this is doing it. If you have any idea, please discuss it in the comments below. Now I don't really talk about attachments, I'm still waiting to get solid data on more of the attachments before I really comment on them, but I know that everyone runs a Light Magazine 1 on the Stitcher. As such, I thought it'd be important to talk about it, especially given the number of shots it takes to kill people. So it costs 6 metal parts and 1 steel spring to craft it, and this gives us a cost of 600. I'm then going to add that 600 to the cost of the gun, and take that as a percentage to get the total cost of the magazine on the gun as a percentage of the total gun plus the magazine. So at level 1, it's 57% of the total cost, level 2, 36, level 3, 25, and a level 4 is only 13. So to me, if you're doing it on a level 1, it's essentially pointless. A level 2 is a little bit costly, but at level 3 or 4, it makes a lot of sense to craft this and run it. I'm going to assume that if you're going to kill someone in a single magazine, the majority of users are taking the extended magazine upgrade, especially if you're going to go against medium or heavy shield users. I'm assuming you can afford the extra cost of the magazine upgrade, especially if you're running one of the higher tiered stitchers. Now let's look at the time to kill. We do the shots to kill, minus 1, divided by shots per second. The shots to kill minus 1 is because your first bullet is going to be essentially instantaneous, and then we take into account all of the intervals of the rest of the magazine, divided by the shots per second. So in terms of a solo kill time to kill, we have the shields on the left hand side, light, medium and heavy, and the number of shots it takes to kill them. Along the top, we have the stitcher upgrades, although in this situation there is no difference between each of the upgrades. So we've got 1.4 seconds to kill a light shield across the board, we've got 1.6 for a medium shield, and finally a 1.8 for the heavy shield. So here's the mathematically tested leaderboard. On the left hand side we've got the different shields, and across the top we've got best to worst. The kettle still comes out in first, followed by the stitcher, then the rattler, and finally the hairpin, although I'm sure no one's surprised about that. In terms of the time to kill, the kettle still beats the stitcher, and the stitcher just beats the rattler, but it's not by much. Honestly, I thought the stitcher was going to beat the rattler by quite a lot more. If anything, I thought it was going to beat the kettle, but here we are. Now let's look at the full leaderboard. We can see that the time to kill is still held by the kettle, the damage by the hairpin, the total cost being the cheapest by the hairpin, the arc penetration and the range by the rattler, and then finally all of the accuracy, agility and stealth stats are bet by the hairpin. The grouping in the arc penetration is just because they all have weak arc penetration, whereas the rattler is the only one that has the medium penetration. The stitcher is overall doing pretty good, it has a fast time to kill, a very low cost and high agility. So if you want to just run in and do another raid after losing all your stuff, it's pretty good. I'm looking to adjust this detailed leaderboard. I want to know what you want to see on it, as it's you as a community that care about what gun wins at what data point. I think these are pretty good starting stats, but please let's peer review and decide what are the actually important stats that should be compared. I've partnered with arctracker.io. They're going to be showing off my videos on their weapon pages and I suggest you check them out if you want your stash and quest to stay organised and never sell the wrong items again. They're linked in the video description. If you think there's a better way to use it, or I've missed something or made a mistake, let's discuss it in the comments as many eyes are better than one. I'll be making mathematically correct Arc Raiders videos. If you want to raid with math on your side, please subscribe.